Hello and welcome to Art with Anna. Today we will be learning about a Russian artist who is considered a modernist or a new artist because um, he made art kind of in the first half of the 20th century. So we are going to talk a little bit about that and um, a little bit more about the artist, but first let's grab some supplies and we'll get started. You will need a canvas, crayons and or markers, a large paintbrush, but it doesn't have to be quite this large, blue and black paint, and a wide roll of tape. All right, now that we have the supplies that we need, we are talking about artist Serge Polyakov. I think that's how you pronounce it. Polyakov, yes. Um, he was a Russian artist um, that lived in Russia till he was in his teens and then moved to Germany and London and then ended up in France where he ended up getting his citizenship. Um, he, his last name means from Poland in Russia, in Russian. So he lived in Russian his whole life, but most likely his ancestors were actually from Poland. Um, he was a great guitar player and that actually paid a lot of his bills in the beginning when he was a, a painter, um, when painting wasn't doing that for him yet. And um, we'll talk a little bit about his style and his type of painting in a little bit. But first, let's grab out our canvas and our markers and or crayons, whichever one you are choosing to use today. And um, we'll get some color on our canvas. All right, I have my canvas here. I have some markers and also some crayons. Um, let's talk a little bit first though about Serge's um, style of painting. So post-World War II, there was a real desire to um, kind of paint all the emotions and um, feelings that came from the war. And obviously, feelings and emotions aren't something physical, um, so representing them is a challenge. And that, in America, um, the term we use to describe that movement is abstract expressionism. Um, abstract meaning not anything real, and then expressionism meaning to express an emotion. Um, in Europe, they called it art informel, or kind of informal art. So it's a similar idea of um, making, painting emotions kind of as they come and um, doing it in an abstract way. So let's look at a few of the paintings that Serge has made. And a huge part of this type of artwork is color. Um, you can really express an emotion through the colors that you choose. So I will have um, these emotions that you can choose from. And then ask yourself what colors would you like to use to express that emotion. Um, I will tell you that we will be adding a dark blue eventually to our painting, but um, these other colors will show through. So think about the colors that you would like to use right now to express that emotion. And then we're just gonna color just different areas, like blocks of color all around our canvas um, in the colors that you choose. All right, so I am going to choose kind of bright and sunny colors. Um, it's becoming spring. It's been kind of sunny, not this week, but the week before. And I'm just gonna choose kind of um, happy, and bright colors for this artwork. So I have picked out three kind of bright colors that I wanna use, a pink, a red, and a green. And I'm gonna do just that where I'm just gonna cover my canvas in sections of that color. No real rhyme or reason, but you want a dense um, space of color here and there. Green's a little sad, I'm gonna get this green. This one's also kind of sad and very dark. <laughs> All right, we've got some green um, and some pink. 
and I'm gonna add another area of red, and I think I'll add um, another second area of pink too. All right, so we've got some solid areas of color on this canvas. So yours should look similar in the fact that you have some sections of color, but it doesn't have to look anything like this. It doesn't have to be configured like this at all. Um, some of the inspirations that um, Serge had was, first he was very intrigued by actually um, Egyptian sarcophaguses. There are images of those and their bright blue colors and how they abstracted um, the human figure were very interesting to him. And then he also met artists um, Kandinsky and then also Delaunay and um, both Sonia and her husband and um, was just influenced by their also same use of this um, kind of expressive informal artwork. So this, we've put pi pigment right on um, our canvas and we're gonna do that even more so in a little bit um, and putting this kind of paint right on the canvas and then kind of just quickly and gesturally um, without much thought moving it around um, is called to in the French is called uh, tachism and that means to like just blot or um, dye it kind of is a term that originates from like dyeing fabric, like dipping fabric. So leaving these shapes that are kind of um, organic, not very geometric, and um, kind of just happen as they are. So that was kind of the main style that Serge used um, in his life. So now that we have these colors, how we are going to preserve them is by taking sections of tape and kind of covering parts, uh, most of, I guess, most of our colors here in any way that you want. And we kind of, when you rip the tape, it should make a shape that's not super geometric. It shouldn't be a perfect line by any means. And we, we want that to be the case. So I'm gonna cover up that red like that. Just use one piece of tape to cover up this pink area here. This one, like that. And a little bit there. And there. Shall you know what? All right, so once you have covered a lot of your color in tape, the next step we're gonna go with is um, adding some blue and mixing it with a little black to kind of deepen the color and covering our entire canvas in, in that color. Um, in most of Serge Polakoff's life, he used really, really bright colors. Um, and then later in his life, um, into his 60s, he started to use more like dark and muted colors. So we're kind of doing that here today. So I'm gonna just get some blue and black on. Well, you know, I put some on my piece of paper, but if you also just wanna mix it on your canvas, you can do that too. That would actually probably be more in line with the tash, uh, um style. So we've got some blue and black. You'll want more blue than black because the black pigment's uh, pretty strong. And we'll mix that up. And then just real gesturally, and that really means um, without too much thought and with a lot of movement, we're gonna cover our, sh our sheet in this kind of deep blue color.
And remember he was uh, very struck by the deep and rich blues of the Egyptian sarcophaguses. Um, he was also very inspired by um, iconography in the church. Um, his mom worked in the church, so he was there a lot. So he's very inspired by kind of those rich colors also. Um, so we've got something like this. So our tape is under there and we have our rich deep blue color, which is looking a little lighter on camera, um, but it's a deep blue color right on here. Now the next step is similar to a lot of the things we've been doing recently, and it's that we're gonna be removing that tape. Now we want to take note of the color that it reveals, but also the organic kind of shapes that the tape makes. All right, so I'm left with these kind of um, sections of color. Um, I think it does look like it was kind of dipped in dye, which is kind of what we're looking for. And then the last step is really simply to just, um, if you want to deepen your colors more, add more color, to just fill in more um, where your tape has been ripped off. Really fill in that color. Now while you're making this, you're also going to be thinking about um, the emotion that you picked your color um, for and kind of be making marks that kind of express that emotion as well. So I'm kind of doing um, short bursts of, like my strokes are kind of short and quick and that's because I'm going for kind of like happy, energetic, but maybe if you were doing um, something that was a little more calm and subdued, you want to do kind of longer and slower strokes of color. And there we have it. So that's our artwork for today. I hope that you had fun. I'll see you guys next week.